Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our worship services here at Linden Baptist Church for our Wednesday evening prayer meeting. So we're still committed to having worship and having it as a community, even if we can't all be in the same room. So right now we're in our sanctuary, which is mostly empty with the exception of James at the camera and us on the stage and of course the presence of the Lord. So as we join together tonight, do keep in mind just one announcement that we will not be having worship services here on Sunday morning. We'll again have a, a feed that we'll either live stream or we'll upload at the normal worship time. But because of the continued concerns over the virus in the United States, we won't be having a meeting in person on Sunday morning. And likely that will continue for a few weeks, but we've yet to make that definite decision. So tonight, as we begin our time of worship, let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you for bringing us together again and using even technology to do that. And so that, Lord, we know that when two or three are gathered in your name, you are in our midst. And tonight, many of us are gathered in your name, even through um, the Internet. And so, God, as we sing songs, we pray prayers, and we hear from your word tonight, may it bless our hearts, may it lift up our spirits in our time of need. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, our first hymn tonight will be Sweet Hour of Prayer. Yeah. 
is our prayer service, and as we do each week, we take time in, to go to God in prayer, lifting to him our concerns. The concern at the forefront for, for all of us today is the coronavirus. And we're going to stop and have a time of prayer. Prayer for those who are trying to seek answers, leaders who are trying to provide direction, healthcare workers, patients, and those who are at home on an extended furlough. Would you bow with me as we go to God in prayer? Father, author and sustainer of life, in these days we are reminded that life is fragile. We are mindful that you love us and know your presence with us is at all times, in all places, in every circumstance. In this moment, we join our hearts, uniting our voices with Christ who perfects our prayers. During this time, when the normalcy of daily routines have been disrupted, when we hear reports of increasing illness, facing days of uncertainty and rising fear, we come to you seeking your guidance, your wisdom, and your comforting presence. We pray for leaders of governments around the world as they respond to spreading disease. May they seek wise counsel as they oversee the best courses of action for, for prevention and care. We pray especially for the medical personnel who are in this moment responding to those impacted by the virus, those fearful of coming down with the virus, those for whom anxieties are high. Provide them the resources they need to provide care and protect their health as they provide health, health care to those who are in need. May they have the physical strength and stamina they need as they work extended hours facing whatever challenges may meet them as they move from patient to patient. May we offer, they offer compassionate care to each person and to each family that they work with in these days. We do pray for all who are staying at home, those who are staying to prevent the spread of disease, those who are trying to limit their exposure, those who are unable to have contact with family and friends as they normally would. May they find your peace and your presence with them. As a community of faith, we pray that we would continue to be in contact with our family, friends, and neighbors, that we would find ways to express your love and grace to them, that we may reach out to make connections as we are able. This is a difficult and confusing time, and we pray that fear and anxiety will not overwhelm us. We know that you are our rock, you are our refuge. May we hold firm to that truth as individuals, as a congregation, and as a nation. Guide us as we live through these unprecedented days. Open our hearts and minds to opportunities to be a witness of your presence with us. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Each week during our prayer service, we collect and share the needs of among our family and friends, of physical needs, physical healing needs, spiritual needs, and emotional needs. So we're going to have a prayer of intercession and there will be an opportunity during the time of silence that as you are sitting where you are watching, you may want to voice a prayer for specific people who come to mind. And as you prepare to pray, you may want to bring certain persons or situations that are on your heart to your mind and lift those to God as I pray with us. Would you bow with me again? Almighty God, in the presence of all people's needs, make us compassionate and caring. 
Give us faith in our praying and love in our serving, knowing that by your power all may find victory in adversity. You bear the pain of the world. Look with compassion on all who are sick, even as we bring to mind the names of family and friends who are suffering. Bring healing to their bodies, their minds, and their souls. Restore those whose lives have been upended by illness. Gift caregivers with a gentle spirit and touch as they provide care. You are a God of comfort. Stand with all who grieve. Comfort them with your presence and may they remember your promise that nothing can separate them from your love. We pray for our community of faith, that we would be a lighthouse for our community and a witness of your love to the world. Draw us close to you and to each other. Accept these requests as we lift them to you in the name of Jesus, who rules over all things. Amen. As we continue our worship, we'll sing together another hymn, a reminder that during this season of Lent, even though the um, recommendations of the government and healthcare professionals have put us definitely in a time of being in the desert, with Christ in the wilderness and going without some things we would like to have, but still the Lord is near us, and he's near us all the time. So we'll sing the hymn, My Lord is Near Me All the Time.
Well, as we have sat here this afternoon uh, in the midst of preparing this worship service, the rain has been beating hard on the roof of the sanctuary. Uh, maybe you have actually heard it as ambient noise uh, during our time of prayer. And as Larice was praying and I was listening to the rain beat on the roof, I was reminded that life oftentimes does uh, beat on us. It buffets us. It, it feels threatening uh, at times. Um, and in the midst of the storm, as the song, sang, uh, as the song said, and in the midst of the trouble that we face, uh, sometimes it's easy for us to despair. It's easy for us to um, wonder uh, about the fragility of our life and to wonder uh, about our salvation and, and whether or not we, our lives are, are going to be able to be maintained at any uh, level at all. Sickness can do that. Uh, storms can do that. Uh, and of course, we're living through a time now where every time I turn on the radio and listen to the governor's press conference, I hear a litany of the things that they've done uh, to restrict our contact with one another, uh, to prevent the spread of the virus. And I anticipate after he reads off the litany of all the things they've done to restrict contact, that there's going to be something else uh, that's coming uh, that will alter and shape of the course of our life and it's easy in those moments to get discouraged it's easy in those moments to get fearful uh, and yet the people of God um, all the way from Israel to the church have been convinced of the providence and the care and the love of God uh, Psalm 91 uh, reminds us uh, of God's care for us and God's love for us uh, here as I read you who live in the shelter of the Most High who abide in the shadow of the Almighty will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For God will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. God will cover you with God's pinions and under God's wings you will find refuge. God's faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For God will command the angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. One of the things that the people of God have known for all the time that we have experienced God is that no matter what it is that we're going through, no matter what it is that we're experiencing, uh, no matter the circumstances uh, that we can't control, the one thing that we can be assured of is that God is present. The one thing that we can be assured of is that God will, will hold us up, that God will give us strength. Now, now I know that uh, many of us are, have been kind of inside for the last several days, and some of you may be beginning to get cabin fever. Some of you may be beginning to wonder, how long, O oh Lord, are we going to have to be in this same house together? Um, or maybe you're actually learning some new patterns of relationship and finding some new avenues of, of being together and enjoying life. Uh, maybe you're learning how to let go of some of the things that have just distracted you from being able to pay attention to, to one another and to those you love. Maybe even during this time, uh, you have had the opportunity to let go of some of the things that have distracted you from being aware of the presence of God 
in your life and in my life. You know, I think one of the things that this time of, of kind of enforced, if you will, exile uh, brings to us is the gift to be able to meditate and to reflect on the presence of the God who says, I am your rock and your fortress. I will be your shield and your buckler. Uh, if you call on me, I will help you to remember uh, the God who said, I will be with you in times of trouble and the pestilence uh, will not uh, afflict you. Uh, to come back in, and get in touch with the God who promises um, his, God's strength and God's wisdom and God's courage uh, to face uh, whatever difficulties uh, come along or even to face the unknown. And I think that's where we are. Uh, we just don't know. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know what next week is going to bring. And, and, and that, can, that can be a scary place to be. But the psalmist reminds us that God has already been where we are. God has already been where we're going. God knows what's ahead. And so we can walk with confidence with God because God has already been there. God has already seen what's coming. And so we, as God's people, can take God's hand and walk into a, a future that may be uncertain for us, but it is not uncertain for God. As I reflected on Psalm 91, um, I was reminded a friend of mine posted on Facebook today, uh, in the midst of the coronavirus, what is your favorite scripture? And I thought, well, I have a lot of favorite scriptures. Not all of them apply to the coronavirus and our kind of forced exile. But one of the ones that came immediately to my mind uh, was in the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse 39, the writer of Hebrews said, But we are not among those who shrink back and so are lost, but are among those who have faith and so are saved. Now, backing up a little bit, the writer of Hebrews said, um, do not, therefore, abandon that confidence of yours, for it brings great reward. For you need endurance. The writer of Hebrews understood that the deliverance of God is not always to set aside or help us to avoid going through hard times or difficult times, but the presence of God often creates in us the ability to endure, to live through, to have the strength to, 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 to sometimes just hang on uh, in the midst of trying circumstances. The writer says, uh, for you need endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For yet in a very little while, the one who is coming will not delay, but my righteous one will live by faith. For my soul takes no pleasure in anyone who shrinks back. But we who know that God is our shield and buckler, we who know that God is our present help, in time of trouble. We who know that when we call upon God, God will answer are not among those who shrink back in fear, who shrink back in our concern and our love for each other, who shrink back from our discipleship, from shrink, shrink, we don't shrink back from our willingness to step out of ourselves and help others. You know, I was reminded the other day too that while it's important that we take care of ourselves, it's important that we maintain the kind of social distance. I was also reminded that the church throughout history though has always been the people who when nobody else would, would step in to help the sick, to help the suffering. And so we don't need to just bunker ourselves in our houses. We need to be open to our neighbors and find ways that we can help people whom, for whom this time of sequestering is making life extremely difficult. We can remember those who have families in care facilities and nursing homes who are unable to see them, probably even to call them and talk to them. And we can find ways to be a comfort and an aid to them. We are not people who shrink back and hide in our houses and hide in our fear, but we are people who have confidence in the presence of God 
So we're not lost in the midst of this crisis. We're not lost in the midst of the uncertainty. We live with a confidence that the God who is our comfort, our shield, our buckler, our hope, is right here, right now, guiding us and leading us and showing us the way even when we can't see it. Amen? Amen. And amen. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we know that it's easy to lose heart. It's easy to get discouraged. We don't like it when our routine changes. We don't like it when we can't get out and go everywhere we want to go. It's distressing when we go to the grocery store and find people have just gone nuts buying toilet paper and raking food off the shelf. And, and that unsettles us. Lord, we pray that in the midst of that, that we will take time and focus on you. That we will take lot time to center ourselves anew and afresh in your love for us and our love for you. And even in the midst of disconcerting circumstances, may we be people who live our lives fully and joyfully as disciples of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, we know that we can be people that live joyfully in the midst of even this crisis because we do believe that God will take care of us, that God has put a call on our life that goes above and beyond our present circumstance. And so we'll sing one more hymn this evening, God Will Take Care of You. <laughs>
Great job, everybody. Yay. Everybody.